Hello everyone and welcome back to the color page of DaVinci Resolve. Today we're having a closer look at the scopes and some automatic features of the color grading process of DaVinci. So let's jump right into it. First of all, I'm going to expand the scopes because I'm not really going to go through all of them within this little window. I'm going to expand them by clicking this expand button. Right now we have four of them and we're going to start with the main one, which is called the waveform. The left, this portion represents the brightness of the image. You do not really need to care about in which, uh, like, what kind of me measuring tool it, it makes and what kind of, what, what 20, 10, 23 of what. You do not really need to care about that. All you need to care about is that this line represents the black this one represents the brightest portion of the image and it means if your your image goes beyond this black portion and it, it is crushed in there it means that the information in your black points are lost uh, is lost yeah and if you go beyond the top portion it means the brightest information uh, of your image is lost as well and it can really be demonstrated here by this little portion. You can actually uh, move your waveform and zoom in by pressing Alt and using your scroll wheel. For example, this portion of the image, we can see that it is completely flat. It's pressing against the top portion of your waveform. It means that information in here is lost. What do we need to do? We can take the gain, reduce it, and now the information is brought back and it is actually this portion of the image. The way you are reading the uh, waveform, the uh, per RGB parade and actually everything in here is from left to right. If something on your image is presented on the left, it's going to present it on the left on your waveform. It, if you find something interesting in the center, it's going to be in the center in here and just by going from left to right you know that the bottom of this waveform is the black points the top portion is the white the brightest actually portions of the, your image and you're going from left to right you can judge by this image what is happening with your image and why would you actually need to use the scopes when you have your eyes your monitor and you can just view the image well first of all you cannot always trust your eyes because your eyes get accustomed to certain brightness levels to certain colors and at some point after a couple of hours of color grading you have no idea what you are doing and you need to reference your scopes in order to understand what is going on really going on with your image and the second thing is that your monitor should be color calibrated mine is not perfectly color cal calibrated that's why i need to reference the scopes the, in order to understand what is going on with my image also you cannot really i don't know i do not really know but i think you cannot really judge just by the look of the image whether the, something is crushed or not you need to reference your scopes in order to preserve the highlights and preserve the information within the shadows. So why would you use the waveform, uh, what are the instances in which you're going to reference the waveform? Well, the simplest one is to create the white within your shadows and create white within your highlights, because you typically want those to like portions to be neutral and the rest of color gradient is happening in between though those so this lower portion of the waveform or of, of the parade represents the shadows the middle portion represent represents the midtones and the high portion the top one represents the highlights so if i want to like change something within the highlights for example see this little portion that i want to actually be white and this is blue dominant and if i hover over my image i can find that this is the sky and if i want for some reason my sky to be completely white i can grab my game and move it from side to side until all of these three parameters intersect and turn into white my my now my whole image 
looking ridiculous a little bit, but my sky is white and I can tell you that it is white just by looking at the waveform. Okay? This is an easy way how to use that. And if I wanted to make my shadows uh, completely black, we can find that the shadows are in here and that the shadows are blue dominant. And if I didn't really want that, I would just move that towards this portion and now my blacks are neutral. Everything else is looking like garbage, but my blacks are neutral. So let's move to something different. This is the same picture. Ah, by the way, I didn't tell you that waveform is your luminance values and your RGB values are overlaid in here. This is uh, a different way how you re can represent your waveforms. This is RGB parade. Every color, uh, meaning red, red, green, and blue, they are represented differently in here. And it means that if you want your, for example, black points to be neutral, you can view the at the bottom of this parade and tell that, yeah, our shadows are blue dominant because the blue color is higher than the green one and then the red one. And if I wanted to counteract that, I would just move our shadows towards something like this. And now I can judge, look at the parade and judge that our shadows are supposed to be neutral. Okay, the top portion as well, if you want to uh, make your highlights neutral, you're going to need to look at them. They have to align. And these are the midtones of our image. They are not aligned as well. They are leaning towards one color rather than the other. This is actually my preferred way how to view the image rather than waveform, but they actually display in the same thing, but using different methods. Now let's have a look at the vector scope. The vector scope it looks completely different from waveform parade because it displays the hue and the saturation. This ring that is in here, which is actually called Graticul. Graticul. Very nice naming. This represents the colors within our color wheel. So this is red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. And this blob in here represents hue and saturation of our image. It means that if I move my image towards something like blue and cyan, we can now, even without looking at our image, we can tell that our image is not balanced and all of the saturation in, in hue lie within this cyan blue color space. Not color space, but space in here. If I wanted to increase saturation of the image like this, the blob is getting bigger. But when I'm trying to create uh, the color contrast within the image, I need to stretch, not just to increase it, I need to stretch the blob to one side and to the other side. So, for example, if I want to be my highlights like blue and my gamma like red. Yeah, it's it's looking hideous. You need to work a lot more on that to make it look good. But you can see on the vector scope that I'm creating blue and red and I'm increasing the saturation of those hues. If you grab a steel from a good looking movie, you're going to see that they are stretched to either side. A very useful thing that you can find within this vector scope is show skin tone indicator. No matter what kind of look you're creating, you can sell it, you can make it believable if your skin tone lies where it's supposed to. So we can display this skin tone indicator, isolate the skin and look where it lies. And the rest, I'm gonna build around the skin tones. Now the histogram. To tell you the truth, I never use histogram, that's why I have no idea what's supposed to show you. I'm going to read it from the Blackmagic 
manual. Histogram displays a statistical analysis of how many pixels of each color channel lie at each percentage of tonality plotted along a digital scale from 0% black to 100% white. Comparing the left, middle and right parts, let's evaluate the color balance in the shadow, midtones, highlights of the image. Have no idea how whether it is extremely useful useful or not. I can't really judge everything that I need from the waveform parade and vector scope, but DaVinci gives you a histogram. Maybe for some people this is a really useful way how you can judge the image. And the last scope that is in here is called CIE chromaticity. Nice really naming. And this thing represents the color space in which your image lies. And in this particular instance, my image lies within the REC 709 color space. As you can see, this is like the smallest color space that you can find. And I found some interesting description within this Blackmagic manual, which is called this black body locus corresponds to the color temperature obtained by progressively heating carbon to different temperatures. So I, I assume this is the curve within this uh, chromaticity. Basically, if your image is really close to the edge of your color space, you are going to crush some, some colors. They are not going to be displayed on a standard TV because standard TV is designed to show you the Rec 709 color space. So these are the four, five actually parades, the uh, scopes. I'm sorry, that you can use in order to judge your image objectively. Now let's move to some things that are in here in DaVinci to make your life easier. They are designed. Uh, they are using artificial intelligence to help you create a starting point of your color grade. The first one is called the white balance. And if you can find something that is white in your image and I emphasize the white, not overexposed because overexposed exposed portion does not contain any information. You need to find something that is white. Let's pretend that this uh, hoodie is white. If you click on it, the da Vinci is going to make it white and shift every color in the corresponding direction to make your image look balanced if you really found something that is white. Close to it you will have this A, which is auto balance. If you click on it and give DaVinci a couple of seconds, it's going to automatically create the look. It means that it's going to preserve the shadows, the highlights, make it like neutral. And sometimes it, it does a good job, sometimes it does a bad job, but it is a starting point of your color grade if you wish to do that. In here we have black point and white point. Using these pickers, we need to select the darkest portion of our image, but which is not crushed in shadows. And we need to select the brightest portion of our image, which is supposed to be white. And I cannot find one in, in this, so the result is hideous. But if you can, those are the portion that are going to correct your image, depending on what you've chosen. Also, a really useful tool. If you have an image that is that does not contain these kind of notes that you have not color graded yourself or someone just gave you an image from a movie and, and told you, I want your uh, film or my film or someone else's film to look exactly like it. You can create a good starting point using artificial intelligence. All you need to do is to select any number of shots that you want to match to the shot that you been sent, right click on the shot that you want to shot match to and shot match to this clip. Da Vinci is going to work its magic and try to not really looking good. But as I said before, these tools are just designed for you, for you to, to facilitate you to make your work easier, not to make your work instead of you. So Da Vinci will try to create the same image as you have clicked on. It's going to try to match the shots. 
as you can see it's not going to do a really good job so you you really have to that's why you are actually paid money as a colorist otherwise you just need you just would just press it once and the job is done no this is not how it goes though so, so this is it for for the scopes and for automatic things that are designed to help you thank you for being here i'll see you in the next video and goodbye